I have to know the strongest vampires on the food chain rob right now. It's just business corner. What the hell, okay? Hey internet, it's Jessica and welcome back to Red and Bray. So, I know I said you guys would pick the ruse for me, but I couldn't wait. <laughs> so, I'm gonna do Isaac first just because he intrigued me the most out of the first impressions, even though I haven't met the other characters yet. But Isaac's gonna go first. You guys can pick the second route, but whatever. Anyway, let's continue. Shaking my head, I shiver and start to hurry home, keeping an eye out for any of the bad types Isaac mentioned. Luckily, I don't see anyone else on my way back, except for one the occasional stray cat or homeless guy on a bench. I don't think I've ever been so relieved to step into my cold apartment, which feels like some kind of holy sanctuary right now. No creeps or huffy brats, just the comfort of my creaky bed and flickering light from my old TV. We sound like we don't live in a very nice apartment. <laughs> Everything will be back to normal tomorrow. Yeah, today was just a fluke. I try to comfort myself with those words as I throw everything uh, everything except my briefs, then flop onto the bed sheets with an exhausted groan. Normally I wouldn't complain about running into a bunch of good looking guys, but there was something off about all of them. I can't put my finger on it, but I have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. Like I accidentally peered into some kind of world I wasn't supposed to see. Well, it doesn't matter. Tomorrow will be the same old, same old. <laughs> That's what I think! I hope. Oh, it's the opening. I was like, what's happening? Are we dreaming? Oh, this is cool. Okay, so, yes. Uh, just, just a reminder, if anyone didn't know, I am, yes, I'm doing the dating sims again. And this is another yaoi sim from, oh, Dominic. I don't, that's his name. Okay. This is Isaac. Hell yeah, look at him. Isn't that a tempting agreement? You're a tempting agreement. Rex? He has a face tattoo. Oh my god. Is that the guy with the teeth? Like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, never mind. Never mind. Just as soon as I said that. So, just like Chest of Blades, obviously, there there's gonna be some interesting scenes, I believe, but there, it's not like hardcore like Chess of Blades. So that's the only thing I believe that it doesn't- it doesn't have like 18 plus scenes. So I don't have to like block anything, thank god. It saves me enough time for editing. But there's definitely gonna be some smut in this. Ugh. Oh, son. Son, fuck off. That's me every morning. <laughs> I bury my face against my pillow to hide from the sunlight. Damn, it must be already be afternoon. Stupid graveyard shifts make it so hard to catch a decent amount of rest unless you sleep underground or somewhere away from a window. Maybe I should invest in a coffin. Well, interesting you're, you're saying that. I'm just wondering, are we gonna get bit by a vampire? Like, that's legit what I'm wondering. If we're gonna get bit and turn into one or we just stay as a human. I don't know. More style points than sleeping masks, that's for sure. Or you could just buy a sleeping mask and not waste your money, Connor. Uh, groaning, I eventually force myself out of bed and stumble over to the kitchen to put some coffee on. Work doesn't start for a while yet, so I can do a little freelancing today. I'm only working at a diner to save some money on the side anyway. My real passion is... Oh, ooh, we can pick writing, music, art. We can be a poor artist like I was. That was depressing. <laughs> uh, no, I'm gonna be an artist. Let's just see how it goes. Ever since I was a little kid, there were always a bunch of fantastical creatures in the places I wanted to draw. I've gotten good enough to make some money from commissions now and then, but there are so many great artists out there who are better than me. Man, that is like the biggest struggle of being an artist. Like, you look at other people's work and you're like, man, they're better than me. But you have to realize they've been doing it longer than you is most likely the case. I'm doing my best to improve. Hopefully that eventually people will say, I recognize that artist rather than what weird anatomy. <laughs> That's me with my drawings. Anyway, I have some time to spare, so I plop down my office chair with a coffee mug in hand. But the moment I start my computer screen, I suddenly remember what happened last night. Back on that dark street. You might you might even see a friend of yours there. Or maybe customer is better the word. I'm sorry if I offended anyone from the UK because my British accent is really bad. Like, I can't do accents. I'm trying here. <laughs> Isaac was acting like he knew something about me or someone I know, even though that should be impossible. There's something unnerving about what he said afterwards, but I can't really remember his words. It's all fuzzy. I'm starting to think it's not the some I'm starting to think it's not some random drug deal going down tonight. A smart man would keep his distance, but I don't 
but if I don't figure out what Isaac meant, it's gonna drive me crazy. So you'd rather die than, like, just be safe? Okay. That sleazeball in a suit's up to something, that's for sure. Put my head down on my desk and rub my eyes with one hand. I guess there's no helping it, huh? I have to see for myself what'll happen tonight. Distracted by my own thoughts, I spend the rest of the time until my shift half hot. Uh, half-heartedly working on a new project. After what feels like forever, it finally gets dark and I head out to start my shift. But during my walk, I can't help feel like a lot more nervous than normal. Troy left this morning for a business trip, so I'm the only one who's working tonight. And if anything happens, I have to deal with it entirely on my own. Really? They wouldn't get, like, someone else? Like, if I was running a diner and, like, I know it's like late at night, not many people are coming in, but you would at least think like maybe one person could stay with the one who's like doing the waitressing and whatever. That would make a lot of sense. Anyway, great. Oh, okay. The diner seems unusually quiet, even for the night shift. Only a couple of people end up stumbling in over the course of a few hours, and midnight ticks over into the early morning. I grow more and more tense until finally I can't take it anymore. Time to close up early. Sorry, Troy. <laughs> Grabbing my keys, I flick off all the lights and leave the diner, locking it up behind me. Then I make my way to the nearby alley where Isaac came from last night. Oh my god, my eyes! But it's empty. No gangsters, no men in suits. Just a deserted hangout for rats and abandoned garbage cans. Maybe I missed the meeting? Although I should have heard gunfire if there was any. I guess, there might not, I guess they might not be here yet, but I really don't want to wait around in this creepy place for very long, especially not alone. Ugh, I should probably just head home. That's probably the sensible thing to do, yeah. After a few more seconds of deliberation, I turn back towards the alleyway entrance. I'm not sure why, but I feel so disapp- Gotcha! What? Who? Who got us? What? Out of nowhere, someone grabs my shoulders. A second later, my back slams against the wall, and a pair of strong arms pin me in my place. Oh, it's this guy! Hey, hey, hey! You're not one of those dumbass Siri. Uh, Siri? Siri? Okay, I'm gonna say Siri. I don't know how to say that. Hey, you're not one of those dumbass Siri guys. You're a human. Two wild, puzzled eyes scan my over my face like some kind of mutant. Human? Of course I'm human. What else could I be? I don't understand. I break off halfway through my sentence and start staring at my attacker. This red-haired guy has a tattoo in his face and is wearing a distinct, distinctive leather jacket. Yeah, you definitely think he's part of, like, a gang or something. Oh my god. Could he be the person the man from last night was talking about? Whoa, why are you getting all mad, man? You're just not the guy I was looking for. He flashes a wild, taunted grin. My eyes are drawn to the shape of his canines, which look like animals. Long and sharp and white bone. You know, you know, you smell pretty nice. Kind of special, actually. Real sweet. Okay, uh, <laughs> he leans in a bit, leering at me with those sharp fangs. It had to be some kind of body mod, right? I'm pretty hungry, too. Haven't eaten all night, and you're looking so much better every second. Shit, if I don't do something, this creep will actually really take a bite out of me. Try to push him off, reason with him. How about, how about we push you away? I'm doing the Isaac's route. Sorry, Rex, but no. Get off! Ugh. I throw every ounce of my strength into pushing the man away, but he doesn't seem to be the least impressed. Instead, he just presses me even harder against the wall, twisting my lips into a mockingly hurt expression. Hey, don't be like that, baby! Oh, god damn it! I just want to play with you. Let me have a little taste. Come on. See, like, no. How about no? Let's not do this, Rex. Come on. He coos at me, star starting to lean in closer again, and a sense of dread grips at me like a vice. I shut my eyes tightly, holding my breath. This is it. I'm going to get torn apart by some psycho in an alleyway. His ragged breathing gr grows steadily louder, and I can feel each exhale brushing against my throat. Ugh. All of a sudden, the pressure pinning me into the wall vanishes. What happened? When I open my eyes, I realize the man's no longer there. No, he's still here, but now... You! Oh shit! He's coming to our rescue! With a loud grunt, a familiar man in the dark jacket swings his fist towards my attacker. <laughs> Fucking Dominic! I knew you were out here! <laughs> 
The redhead lets out a gleeful laugh and he dodges the punch, moving at an incredible speed. Second later, he aims a lightning fast blow of his own towards the other man, Dominic. Whoa. Whoa, it's happening, guys! <laughs> With an, un with an unchanging expression, Dominic smoothly steps sides. The next moment, his hand shoots out to swipe his opponent's face. Oh, whoa! I hear the sound of something sharp cutting flesh. And a moment later, blood starts to drip down from the blood starts to drip from the red the red hand the redhead's cheek. <laughs> Dom, are you really mad? Wow! Rather than counterattacking, the tattooed man pauses, wiping the blood from his sleeve. Before my eyes, the claw-like gash on his skin starts to repair themselves until they disappear completely, leaving him uninjured. Am I going crazy? There's no way any human could do something like that. No, no, this is, has to be a bad, just a bad, bad, shitty dream. Don't bring him in this. Dominic's eyes narrowed into slits as he stares at the man with the leather jacket, who's laughing it just as he heard the best joke on earth. <laughs> wow, wow, in that case, I'm gonna get my hands on him first. Because I want to see you get way, way madder, Dom. Rather abruptly, the tattoo man's face freezes, and his grin fades to frigid, bloodthirsty expression. I want to see you suffer until you stop thinking of us as fucking jokes. Just like that, he charges Dominic again, recklessly swinging frantic punches. This time, though, he seems to be moving even faster than before, and his strikes are full of rage. The assault is so powerful that Dominic retreats a little, losing a few feet of the ground of the, to the other man, who's clearly fueled by fury. They dodge and swipe at each other so quickly that my eyes can hardly follow their movements. Their speed is completely inhuman, and the more I watch them, the more my blood runs cold. It's impossible that they're really not human? When my mind flashes back to the redhead's sharp fangs, my stomach tightens, and the shiver, ri and the shiver wrecks my body. Come here, Dom! I'm not gonna let you run away this time! With a menacing howl, the tattooed man leads up, pushing himself off the wall to launch forward towards Dominic. Ugh. When he doesn't manage to dodge in time, their bodies collide, and they tumble to the ground. At this rate, one of them is going to end up torn up. If I try to do something, they might turn on me, but can I really just stand here? Um... <laughs> Maybe I should just stay out of it, because I feel like if I jump in, they're gonna hit uh, Connor by accident. So I'm gonna stay over here. No, I shouldn't say anything. These guys are obviously monsters, so if I involve myself now, I'll get torn apart. And they're fighting strangely- and they're fighting strangely mesmerizing to watch, even if the whole- even if it's on a whole other level of deadly. Biting my lip, I watch the two men tussle frantically, their grunts filling the air until- Whoa, what's going on here? Oh wait, is this, is this Isaac? I have no idea. Gentlemen, can you put things on hold for a moment? At that instant, the fighting stops completely. Hey, here he is! Okay, a tall figure approaches us from the alleyway entrance. His face flashes into view under the street lamp. Isaac? After frowning at Dominic and the tattooed man, Isaac turns towards me, his eyebrows shooting upwards. He's surprised we actually showed up. Oh, you came after all. Sorry you had to see these two at their worst, but I did promise Tom he would be here, didn't I? So that's who Isaac was referring to. How the hell did he know that I had met Dominic? Wasn't that just a few hours before I saw Isaac? He never came into the diner either, so someone must have told him. Fuck off, Isaac! You're not the one- You're not gonna stop me from tearing the shit hit anew! Ugh. Before the redhead can finish his sentence, Dominic suddenly throws him off with a grunt. Jesus Christ! He slams against the ground a few feet away, letting out a pained wheeze. Chuckling, Isaac pushes up his glasses, <laughs> looking completely at face. Oh my God! Really, Rex, you need to learn to hold back. You're going to embarrass yourself, even even your Helgen brothers. As Isaac just flips the switch, the leather jacket man seems to lose all of his bloodlust. Instead, he groans and rolls his eyes, looking at like a kid who just got his favorite toy taken away. Whatever, stupid old man. After Rex mutters a reply, the, electric, the electric tension in the air around us gradually fades. It's replaced by an uncomfortable, awkward pause, and then four of us exchange glances for a few seconds. But after the adrenaline cloud in my brain finally dissolves, I take a deep breath and turn to Isaac. Sorry to ruin the moment, but some kind of explanation for all this would be great. My voice was cracking slightly with anxiety, breaking the long moment of silence. 
Dominic, Rex, and Isaac all stare at me, and now I understand how a rabbit must feel in a den, in a den of wolves. These guys, they're not normal. You know that, don't you, Isaac? When I pose my shaky question, Isaac throws a glance towards Dominic. For a split second, it looks like Dominic winces faintly, his eyes narrowing. But a cold, unreadable look soon washes over his features again. Yes, Connor, I think it's obvious by now that they're not normal. Isaac finally speaks up, and I shift my gaze back over to him quickly. You see, behind the spit shine gloss over our beloved San Francisco is much, much darker underbelly. One that people like you usually go their whole lives without glimpsing. He strains his tie with one hand, an impressive smile flickering on his face. Or impassive, sorry. But, but once you get a taste of that darkness, there's no going back. For instance, if a hypothetical cute little diner boy decides you want to go tell the police a funny story, a tall, scary man in a dark leather jacket would make it... Would want to, would want to make sure he never says anything else again. He's threatening us. As Isaac has, as, at Isaac's casual threat, I glance back at Dominic in disbelief. His lips are pulled into a grimace as he meets my gaze, and I think I, hint, I and I think I see a hint of guiltiness on his face. Does that mean he really killed me just to stop me from telling anyone about what I saw tonight? Of course, that's hypothetical. Humans like us can work with vampire companions just fine, assuming no one gets loose lips. So wait, Isaac's not a vampire? Or is he? He is! No, he has to be! What? Oh wait, then you're not a vampire? My shocked question makes Isaac pause for a second. However, he quickly lets out a laugh and shakes his head, adjusting his tie with one hand. Not really, no. Not like Isaac or Dominic here, anyway. Okay, yeah, because he was hypnotizing us in the last one, so... He's a different kind of vampire, I guess. Don't lump me in with that piece of shit, Isaac! Rex slowly protests with, from where he leans against the wall, glaring at us. Oh, of course. Of course. I'm sorry. Now, back to the subject at hand, Kona. J just as Isaac rolls his eyes and stares up again, a pair of light footsteps echo from down the alley. Several moments later, a short blonde rushes up beside Isaac, panting a little. Ah, <sighs> phew! Isaac, I'm so sorry. I'm l- Eh? Halfway through his sentence, Luca breaks off sharply. He stares at me with a saucer-like eyes, and I stare back in astonishment. Luca? Hang on a second, were you the one who told Isaac that I met Dominic? As bizarre as the whole situation is, the pieces are starting to fall into place. This little brat was trying to get me to tell him about shady types. In other words, find people who might have been vampires for him. Luca's surprise then flustered reaction confirms my suspicion, and he averses his gaze sheepishly. Yeah, so? It was pretty clear that you were trying to protect him. At that, Luca's eyes flick over towards Dominic, taking on a certain sharpness. He glances over at Rex with the same hateful look too. Does Luca know both of them already? Alright, let's not get too excited. Letting out a long sigh, Isaac pinches the bridge of his nose with a thumb and forefinger. It seems there is some miscommunication going on here. You see... I'll split your fucking skull open, whoa, who's this? <laughs> During Isaac's second attempt to explain the situation to me, an entirely different noise splits through the air. Oh yeah? I'd like to see you try. <laughs> not so distant a sound of a fight floods towards us from a neighboring alleyway. It's just not two voices either. Actually, it sounds like a lot more than that, like a party of worse, the bloodiest kind. Ugh, this is getting to be downright comical. Of course they decide to go at it tonight. Animals, really. Despite the scornful nature of his word, Isaac seems to be brightening up. Isaac seems to be brightening up all of a sudden. Damn it! Why are the clans fighting now of all times? Is every vampire in San Francisco out here tonight? Even though Isaac is obviously pleased, some kind of gang war must be going on. The second I open my mouth to ask a question, however, Isaac takes off running, directly towards the source of the noise. Wait, Isaac, where are you? Luca starts to jog after Isaac with an exasperated cry, glaring at the other man's back. At the same time, Dominic turns his head in the opposite direction, apparently dis disinterested. He takes long strides towards the end of the alleyway quickly, making it clear that he doesn't want to stick around. Rex, however, makes it a beeline straight for me? Just you and me now, baby. Don't be shy. Oh boy, this night just went from bad to awful in a span of just about 15 minutes. But if I want to figure out what the hell is going on with these guys, I better choose what to do right now. Um, okay. Look <laughs> at the other ones like run away from Rex. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna catch up with Isaac. 
Isaac's no better than the rest of these guys, but at least he seems to know a lot about these vampires. He took off at the speed of light down the alleyway, though, so I've got to hurry if I want to catch up. Sorry, maybe some other time. With a hasty shout to Rex, I, I turn my heel and sprint after Isaac as fast as I can. On my way, I pass Luca, who throws me at a shock stare. Wait, it's dangerous out there! Come back! He calls it anxiously to me, but I don't have the energy to shout and tell him, Tell me something I don't already know in reply. We're probably gonna die, but it's okay. <laughs> when I get closer to Isaac, he seems to notice my presence because he slows his pace down a little. Why, oh, fancy meeting you here, Kona. Decided you wanted to taste the fun after all. Your sense of fun is pretty messed up. Huh. Isaac lets out a bark of laughter, shoving his glasses back up on his face as he runs down the street. You saw Rex and Dominic fighting, didn't you? How about two whole gangs of vampires fighting each other? You're insane! Who the hell would want to be in the middle of something like that? My angry question makes Isaac's broad grin darken a little bit, and his eyes flash behind the lenses. Wouldn't you rather see monsters tearing a Wouldn't you rather see monsters tearing up tearing each other apart rather than attacking humans? After all, every dead vampire just makes the world a better place. Isn't that something worth watching? Was there a strange bitterness in his voice just now, or am I imagining things? What does that mean? Huh, okay. No, I definitely heard it, but why did it come out so suddenly? Before I can question him about it, we are around we round a corner and Isaac abruptly stops. There before it says The alleyway filled with burly figures, clawing and slashing at each other like wild animals. <laughs> come here, you Helgen piece of shit! I'll rip your head off, bastard! Angry shrieks of shouting echoes in the air. Ugh! Whoa! I have to quickly duck to dodge a spray of blood, which splatters on the wall behind me. Isaac, this isn't safe! What the hell are we- Are you taking notes? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> Open mouth, I stare at Isaac, who's scribbling something down on a small pad of paper. Why do you look so surprised? Didn't I say I was an information broker? I have to know the strongest vampires on the food chain, Rob, right now. It's just business corner. What the hell, okay? As casually as if he was just talking about the weather, Isaac gives me a shrug, then goes back to writing. You're a madman, I swear! I shake my head in disbelief, turning back to the ongoing fight. At some point, it seems like Rex jumped in because I glimpsed his red-haired red -haired figure in the middle of things. When did he get there? Come on, come on! None of you fucking cowards are gonna challenge me tonight! I guess I'll have to find a new playmate. <laughs> his maniacal laughter blends in the fray, and I can't help but shudder. They really do look like animals. Vicious wolves tearing at each other's throats. All this while, these creatures have been stalking the night streets of San Fran- And I never knew? Thought it makes my blood run cold. Ah, what a shame. He's not here tonight. Not like I expected him to be, really. Isaac's quiet mutter interrupts my thoughts, and I shoot him a curious look. He? Who's he? But when I question Isaac, he only he only shakes his head, laying at a low sigh. We should leave. Things are getting pretty nasty. I don't want to get any blood on my shoes, either. I just had them clean yesterday. <laughs> Never mind that! I'd be more worried about getting my neck torn open. I grumble nervously, eyeing the vicious gangs going at each other. No argument there. Come this way, then. Isaac motions me to follow him, and then we head into the alleyway, much to my relief. But there was one. But even once we're out of sight, the image of the vampires tearing into each other keeps me from playing in my head. Do they really do that every night? Wouldn't the police notice? Isaac shakes his head, letting out a patient sigh. All brawls, bra all out brawls, don't happen too often. Expect. Except when tensions escalate. The two gangs hate each other for a fair bit, even though they're technically part of a large one in San Francisco Coven. I was hoping to work out a trade deal tonight, but it seems that it's not in the cards. Oh well. He grimaces, wearing a disappointed look. Christ, how can he act like this in such an how can he act like this is such a normal thing? They're monsters for God's sake. He must be insane. Ugh, I'm getting out of here before any more crazy shit happens. Su sucking in deep breath, I begin to head into the opposite direction, towards my apartment. Wait! I wouldn't leave so soon if I were you. What is he gonna do now? When Isaac calls to me, I pause, turning back towards him reluctantly. Wearing a sly, known smirk, he closes the distance between us at a slow pace. At a slow pace, and soon he's standing right in front of me again. It won't be long before the other vampires in San Fran hear that you know about them. You know what that means, right? The dangerous, lit, the dangerous lit in his voice makes me swallow reflectively. 
No, but I can guess that it's not anything good. Isaac snickers, his eyes narrowing in delight behind his glasses. To put it bluntly, humans who learn about what's going on here at night, they get dealt with quite expediently. Luca and I are exceptions, so we do business with them. But you? Huh. So, Isaac and Luca are not vampires. But, but like, Isaac was like hypno hyp hypnotizing us. So it has to be something supernatural. He leans in, lowering his voice in a provocative purr as he brings our faces close together. Before the week is out, you'll end up drained dry and left as a lonely corpse. Or, more likely, as the little, as the cute little pet of whatever vampire catches you first, kept around for your blood and your pretty face. Flattering, right? The crude but confident way he talks he's talking about all of this is disturbing to say the least. I want to argue, but after I remember the way Rex was looking at me just earlier, I probably realized that Isaac probably isn't exaggerating. So you're saying I'm screwed? I have to leave the city or else I'll be spending the rest of my days as a vampire cattle? Well, that's one option, naturally. Isaac raises a hand, but I feel his fingers drifting through the back of my hair. Uh what? What's happening? First instinct is to duck away from his touch, but all of a sudden, I can't tear my gaze away from his hip- from the hypnotic, swirling glimmer of his eyes. So he's hypnotizing us! It's just like last night. What kind of mess up power is he using on me? You see, if you were working as my assistant of mine, you'd be much safer on the streets. Neither clan wants to get on my bad side. The chance of them harming you would be very low. Don't you think that's a tempting agreement? Um, okay, since we're doing Isaac's route, I'm gonna have to give in. I'm assuming he's gonna bite me or hypnotize me. I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but let's see what happens. Everything feels so cloudy, and I'm like inside- like I'm inside a dream. I don't want to fight against it. All I can see is Isaac's beautiful golden gaze. Feeling dazed, I numbly nod my head. There's a good boy. You know I have your best interests at heart, don't you? His hands drift from my hair over my cheek, and those slender fingers trace down my jaw. I can't think of anything other than the seductive murmur echoing in my ears. Oh my god. I think I'm falling asleep? Or maybe I am? Since... And just like that, the fog in my head vanishes. I realize how close Isaac is standing to me, standing, standing to me, and quickly stumble back, blinking in confusion. Uh, what? What did I just... Oh well, now that you're officially my assistant, I'll stop by your fine establishment tomorrow night to get things settled. Wait! Hang on, I didn't really mean- Isaac grins cheerfully, giving in a few playful clicks of his tongue. An agreement's an agreement, right? You're not intending to just break your word, surely? If you are, well, there are a few vampires I know who'd love to punish the untru untrustworthy, untrustworthy mischief maker like you. What an asshole! <laughs> God damn it! I can't believe this guy! Could he be any more open about blackmailing me? More importantly, what the hell did I just agree to? And why couldn't I resist? There's definitely something supernatural about him, even if it's not a full vampire. I should keep I should have kept on walking. More angry at myself than Isaac, I ball my hands into fists. Fine. Come to come to the diner tomorrow. But I swear if you pull something like this again. Pull? Pull what? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm just an ordinary businessman with extra nor with extraordinary talents. What a jackass I hate him! <laughs> Isaac innocently shrugs off his shoulders, then offers me a little wink before turning away. I'll show up promptly at closing tomorrow, so be ready. Make sure you wear your Sunday best. I can't wait. If I'm lucky, I'll get struck by lightning before I can reach the diner. Only landing on an airy chuckle at my sour response, Isaac waves a hand at me while heading it off while heading off down the road. I scowl at his departing back, which soon vanishes around the corner. But once all he's gone, all of my tense energy from earlier really dissipates, leaving me exhausted. Ugh, my head hurts too. It must be because of that weird thing Isaac kept doing to me with his eyes. I should get a pair of good sunglasses, maybe that would help. <laughs> Grumbling quietly, I shove my hands into my pocket and begin walking home. Okay guys, I'm gonna end this episode here. So finally it's getting interesting. I think I am officially locked into Isaac's route now. So I believe there is a good and bad ending for each of the routes. Because I, when I was reading on the itch.io page, it said there's eight endings. So I think there's both good and bad endings. As much of an asshole Isaac is, I don't know why, I just like his demeanor. Like the way he acts, I just like characters like that. It's, it's a curse. Um, 
Uh, anyway, you guys let me know in the comments what you think. So we finally met Rex. So, I think we met all of the roots we're supposed to be, uh, witnessing to the romances and whatever. So, you guys let me know in the comments which guy you want me to pick after I do Isaac. But... I am very interested in what's gonna happen now because we're be becoming his assistant, so I don't know what the hell that means. Also, I'm very curious what kind of, like, supernatural creature or supernatural element Isaac has because he did say he's not a vampire. He doesn't have fangs like Rex or Dominic, so I'm wondering what he is. And then Luca, is he just human and he's just the assistant of Isaac too? Like, I don't know what his role is there. But anyway, thank you once again to Argent Games for sending me a game key to play this game. And if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you know when I upload the next episode for Red Embrace. And yeah, I will see you all in the next video. Bye! Are these the same people from the bridge? Get off! Where's Ellie? Oh! To the main characters. These powerful beasts are known as summons. They are extraordinary beings that can be called into battle by their summoner. They are also depicted as